Hey guys, what's going on? Kind of a different view. Um, I'm actually going to wash the dishes and talk to you guys while I'm washing the dishes, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so, with that being said, um, let me turn on the water just a little bit. Yeah, you should be able to hear over that. Um, anyways, oh, I got to put the dishes away first. Anyway, um, so a lot of things going on in the reselling world. I want to discuss the way to this. There we go. <laughs> um, a lot of things going on in the reseller world. I want to discuss real quick. Um, PayPal possibly taking a break uh, from eBay uh, and Amazon. Or I'm assuming Amazon Pay actually would be acceptable at some point. You're probably going to see my problem edition there. It's all cool. Anyways. Um, Yeah, see my dishes. See my dishes? Anyways. Um, yeah, a lot of things going on uh, with the reselling world, and kind of want to talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah, Apple Pay, um, I think Square, and some other things are going to be accepted on eBay, which is good. I've been bitching about this like forever, and it really came from not being able to get on eBay for the longest time because of PayPal. And I think since a, so many years have passed and probably because of the break and eBay's um, connection with, I don't know where this straw came from. I think it came from this. Um, but I think because of the fact, is this one here? I don't know. Um, but I think because of the fact that, I don't know where that goes, I'm just gonna put that there for now. Um, well, because of the fact that I couldn't get on there, or, or no, 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 hold on, I forgot my train of thought for a second. Um, but because of the fact they kind of separated from eBay and they did this whole thing doing that, um, they kind of took another road to uh, getting away from eBay and trying to transition um, to get away from them and trying to let other people have an opportunity to let people sell on their payment service, which is a great idea. Um, it ultimately is going to help them in the long run. I don't know why I shut the silverware door. I'm not done putting away the silverware. Um, but now they're they're saying that they're having beta testers go in and not accept PayPal and accept the other payments, uh, which hopefully is not that much trickery. But I guess people were confused by it at first and didn't explain it at first. So a lot of people that bought into. Um, that and clicked yes accept um, they kind of got screwed they kind of got uh, put into that oh it's on my shoulder <laughs> um, they kind of got put into that kind of not knowing what was going on um, so but my thought on that is it, it's great it's just getting to get the buyers to get into that and I think that was a big problem with anybody else um, getting into the eBay world now this is the kind of thing that a dig at eBay is that they might not understand what they just did because of the fact that a lot of auction sites were having issues with people uh, coming on board because they weren't using PayPal or they were using PayPal but they weren't more well known. Now here comes eBay switching up the platform and really letting anyone accept any payment pretty much. I'm assuming it's gonna be, it's gonna happen in the long run. Um, hopefully we don't get cut off because so there's things in the apartment that need to fix so the maintenance might show up but I doubt it they haven't showed up in the last few weeks so I assume it's not gonna happen today um, with that being said it you know I don't think it's a bad thing I, I think some people are just scared and they're always scared by change but I mean just think about all the people that that like Apple pay that like square um, that like you know Bitcoin that want to buy with this kind of stuff. Now, what I hope happens is that eBay will hold your money and, and transfer your money, um, or maybe just hold it in the currency that you have so that um, everything is used in US dollars on eBay, but it's transferable around all these people. Now, I don't know if they're going to accept Bitcoin, but I would assume that they probably will just because people are trying to make Bitcoin a big deal. And, um, I think they might do it. 
Um, the other side of it is that are these platforms going to be able to withstand a lot of these purchases and things like that that people will be doing? Um, like I said, people may look at my channel and go, this guy only has a few videos. He's talking about just starting on eBay. How does he know all this knowledge and everything like that? And I've talked about it before in that I'm not new to eBay at all. I've been around the bush. I paid attention to what's going on. I've watched a lot of videos and I paid attention to the trends, what's going on, what people were selling and things like that. And, you know, uh, that's where I kind of want to make a switch in this video and talk about other stuff. Um, because the payment process thing, that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of a foray subject that, or kind of a side subject that really I didn't really care to talk about. Because it's really just people not wanting to deal with change. Now, some the people that got kind of through to the side and can't use PayPal now, that's kind of sucks. That's kind of sucks really bad. But the thing about a lot of those sellers is they probably have a couple of different accounts. So they probably can just stop selling on those accounts and sell on the other ones or just post to like a little bit of things on that one that they know are gonna be long-term items. And just, just to kind of help eBay out if they want to. But a lot of people that probably feel tricked or something like that and may try and create another account to get away from that. And I don't know if you can do that uh, with eBay knowing that you did accept the, the terms, but I'm sure if the two accounts aren't somehow connected and you were able to connect and you were able to get around that, you probably could use your other account to get around that until you know they they let PayPal back into the fray and it goes to everyone else because I'm assuming what's gonna happen is they're gonna let all these people test this out and then once it all comes down to it and there's people actually using uh, those things and they have quite a bit of people that are not afraid to use those payment things um, which I think ultimately they're just gonna really have what I think they should have is just like a payment uh, uh, center uh, for eBay in which they just take everything and it doesn't really matter to you you're still getting your money it's just the fact that it'll be processed through Apple Pay and you know uh, Google Pay and all this other stuff it's not really affecting you it's just going to go through a Google kind of checkout center and that's what I think it should be it should have no effect on us what currency they're using and we shouldn't have to sign up for five different accounts and I don't think it'll be that way I'm thinking it's going to be the way I'm I'm thinking about like a kind of a payment center that they go to and it'll just take them to that and everything will be transferred to your funds. Um, but they did talk about holding your money and I'm not a big fan about that because that's a whole Amazon thing and that's one thing people hate about Amazon. So why would you take the things that people hate about Amazon and put it into eBay? That doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't know. I think some people are just making a big hoopla over that for nothing. Um, I don't think that's a big deal right now. I think they'll eventually switch back but maybe just because of the way, you know, just financially and how they're going to set it up for the future. You know, like it, it's all, like I said, it's with everything. When, when people change the taste of food um, or you go to a restaurant and something's just horrible and you don't like it no more, you stop going there for a while. But ultimately, you like that food so much, you're going to go back to it because you want to see if they change the flavor back or if you want to see if it tastes any better than what it was. And usually you were fine with it. You just had to accept the change and go back to that restaurant. And it's kind of like what's going on on eBay right now. It's like things are happening. People aren't happy about it because there's change. People don't like change because when they get accustomed to certain things. Amazon kind of changed the world in that respect because I worked for Amazon for almost six, seven years, somewhere around that, probably six and a half years. And they constantly talk about changing and it's part of the Kaizen thing. It's part of this Japanese, Chinese culture. With, I don't, I, I can't remember which one it came from. I'll make sure there's something, there's something in there. There it is. Floating. Floating thing. Couldn't find it. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a part of that. But what I want to talk about and, and really talk about today is something else. I want to talk about uh, reselling in general and the people's knowledge of certain things and you watching these videos. And I don't know if I talked about I don't think I talked about this topic. I'll probably talk about it in passing. If I had talked about it, then that's fine. I'm sure I got other things that I just came up with. But that's why I want to talk about it. Um, sorry, I'm at the end of my dishwashing phase and I'm finishing it up. Um, but it's just a simple fact of people showing you things and saying, this doesn't sell. 
this was what you should buy. This is what you shouldn't buy. And it's cool that they tell you that, and it's cool that you watch the videos and so forth. And wake myself up. And, you know, that's all great and dandy. But when it comes down to it, anything you can sell on eBay, anything you can get and put on eBay. Now, are you going to make a bunch of money off everything? No, you're not going to make a million dollars off everything. But there are things that you can make money on and make a profit on because things are so dramatically cheap. Um, now, I did go to a few yard sales and they, that actually went on to my um, other channel. I'm done with the dishes. We are done. Complete. Um, but I did go on my other channel, my main channel, Brad Tragic, and I went to some yard sales. And what got me thinking about this is, you know, <laughs> the process of thinking that goes through these people who have these yard sales that they charge like astronomical prices for things that you know the value of because you sell online. But you have to think about this in a way, uh, in the terms of there's different markets. There, there's different markets and online is a whole different ball game because anybody can buy anything online. But in person, like if I was selling a store, the prices that I've seen at this girl's uh, yard sale the other day, I would probably sell them at that price. That's the prices I would sell them for at a local market because that's what I could get for them because it's there, they're there, and they're in the now and they can buy that product and go home with it, they would pay a little bit more money. But if you're taking that product and you're trying to make extra money with that, if you're already two, three dollars into a shirt that you know you're not gonna make any money off of, you're not gonna buy it for resale at a yard sale, ultimately. But then if you go to these yard sales that really just wanna get rid of stuff, and that's, that's the whole point of yard sales anyway. Like if you're having a yard sale to make money and you, and you just price things up and you're oblivious to the actual price of an item you know if it's a perfect condition if it's brand new with tags then fine set that price high but just know you're at a yard sale you're not going to make that money if you're expecting to get that kind of money you need to take it to a, a children's uh store and, to, and that that's what i'm talking about there's their children clothes and there was like two bucks for a shirt there was like uh, two bucks for a pair of shorts and it was like eight dollars for an outfit it, it was like brand new retail prices almost it wasn't even used prices. It may be Goodwill prices. And see, that's the bad thing with Goodwill is Goodwill is doing that now. And so some people may think, oh, well, this is the going price if I have a yard sale. Most people ain't going to buy that. That's, that's the thing. Most people are not going to buy that. But in my town, we have a factory. We have a few factories that pay pretty good money. So some people think that they can go to yard sales and they'll pay that amount of money. And they'll get that amount of money. But that's the thing. You have to find that person to come to your yard sale to get that money. And we got people that are resellers in this area. I know I'm not the only one here in Greensburg, Indiana. Um, there's other people in Indiana that do do reselling. And they're going to go to your yard sale and they're not going to buy anything because you've overpriced your items. When you do go to these yard sales that sell their shirts for 50 cents a quarter uh, and jeans for a dollar, you know, that's when you're talking about the, the, the places where you can make some good money. Even if you're not going to sell the products for that much money, you're talking about selling them for like $4.99 plus shipping or, you know, tacking the shipping on to the $4.99 and charging that for it. That's where you're going to make your money. And that's where kind of the free shipping would kind of get you in trouble because people are not going to want to buy that item because they're going to see, let's say for example, Wrangler jeans, okay? Brand new, you can get them at Walmart. Um, you, you can get them at Walmart for probably, you know, 15, 20 bucks. And you buy them at a yard sale. You can tell they're kind of newish. They look really nice. And you, and you put them online. You put them for, you know, let's say you put them for $14.99. And that's free shipping. It's gonna They're going to be somewhat heavy, I would think. I haven't sold any jeans, really, lately. I saw my wife's, but they were like really thin jeans that I sold. So it was, it was pretty pricey, though, to send those. So, I mean, I would think it'd be six or seven bucks for shipping. So you're not making very much money off that. But it's coming from a person who's looking online at that. They're going to go, why would I pay that for that? If it's a pair of jeans I can get at Walmart or something for like $15, $20, why am I going to pay for a used pair of jeans? So that's kind of where the free shipping gets you in trouble. 
But like I said, if you find the yard sale, you can find clothes for a cheap price. As long as the quality is good, I don't think it matters what the brands are. You know, these people are out there telling you, you know, oh, get this brand, this brand. Let me tell you guys, I've got about three shirts on Poshmark right now. And I know that's only three shirts, but I'm going to put them on eBay soon. Because I have them on Poshmark, so I was like, why am I going to put them on eBay? I could cross them, but that's fine. But I, I took all that time to list them on Poshmark. I thought somebody would want to buy at least one of the shirts. I think I think I, I yeah I got three shirts. <laughs> These shirts are Nike. One is uh, some other ones, and I also put two of them on eBay that I bought at Goodwill. One's a Pendleton. I've seen people sell it for the same price I have it up right now. Then there was a brand called Minch. I never heard of it. Shirts pretty decently, but there's a button missing on the top. Um, and there's some other problems with it. I think it's missing like one other button somewhere. Um, but it's a really, really nice shirt. And I've yet to get one offer. I've yet to get uh, anything else. Uh, barely any watchers. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And that's what I think about these people telling you these brands. It's like, yeah, that's great. But they've probably fled the market with those brands. So I need to go out and I need to get whatever I, I got that's available not hunt down all these other things if i can find good quality clothes that's what you need to buy so i think a lot of times what i like to do is i like to watch the what sold videos and i do like to watch these resellers because i like to see what they do how they go about where do they get their stuff um their i guess the way they negotiate at a yard sale like how do they say things how do they word things that's the kind of things i think you should more be paying attention to um can you tell if the, buyer, if the seller gets irritated when they ask these questions? Uh, how do they act? Um, what is their general, I think, consensus about certain topics? You know, I think that's what you need to look at when watching these videos. Not, oh, they bought this Pendleton shirt, or hey, they bought this, um, what's another one? Vineyard, Vines, whatever the hell that thing is called, which I used to see them all the damn time. I could have been a millionaire by now. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, uh, but they tell you, you know, they look for these shirts and look for that. That's what's going to sell. And then you get them and you just, they don't sell. They don't sell. Uh, Thrift School is, is one that I think he's kind of a guy who's kind of along my lines. Because I think I would be where he is now if I had started a long time ago. And continue the way i had gone. Because he kind of shows that he has all these shirts that people are telling him to go out and buy and he still has them sitting behind him and he talks about how he doesn't know why they're not selling blah 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 and it's interesting to watch a guy like that because you see that he's got the knowledge he's using the knowledge from the youtube videos that they're telling him to do but that's where you got to say and think to yourself that maybe they're not right maybe they just that little bit of information they could have told you is quality quality is the key and if any brand is quality, you can pick it up. You can make some money off of it. The biggest thing I think is pictures. Make pictures look good. And I'm a very, very, I am guilty of this. My pictures probably don't look as good as what some other people do. I don't feel the need to make everything white, though. Because here's the thing about that. You're not buying it from a retail store. You're buying it from another seller online. Now, if it says Target or Walmart, I can expect that it's going to be a professional photo because they probably took a um, a thing. But I probably wouldn't buy that because I want to know what the actual item looks like. And if you're taking a photo <clears throat> of a white background and the product looks like it's fake or it looks like it's just a stock photo, I'm not going to want to buy that. I want a picture of the actual item. <clears throat> so that's something you need to think about, too, I think, when doing your pictures is that if you make it way too professional, people might be turned off by it. That's something that people don't really tell you in these videos. And I think that could be a misrepresentation of what you're selling. And it could turn off some buyers. Other things to think about, and like I said, you know, go outside the box. List something you don't think would sell. Good example of this, and it didn't get sold yet, but it's surprisingly, and I think the dude just realized what he bought maybe, and he thought it was something else. I have no idea. But it almost got a sale. It was a book cover. These things are usually everywhere. Book covers. Uh, they're really cheap things that you put over. It's like a fabric. And you put over a book, I think, to protect it. Or some people do it to 
I know a long time ago the, the these book covers used to be around where people would take the slip covers off the hard covers to put it on like an adult magazine. They do it in the old movies. Um, <clears throat> but I think a lot of times they do it now to protect the book that they really like, like maybe a Harry Potter book, like a hardback book. Really. They really want to protect it, make sure it doesn't get wet or like that. So they'll get these fabric covers, and they have different things. Like I got Marvel, Ninja Turtles, and Avengers, I think. Oh, wait, not Marvel. Avengers, Ninja Turtles, and I think uh, Iron Man is another one that I got. Uh, and I'm selling them, and one of them is pretty, I mean, they're pretty up there, but they're really, really cheap because people kind of discount them uh, for people not wanting them. But I think it's something that if you see those and you get them for a cheap price, like a buck, it's kind of worth picking up because they're going to be sitting around for a while. And some people might want them down the road, you know. Things you got to think about is, like I said, the cheaper you get, the cheaper you can invest in that product and to hold on to it, keep it in your inventory. Somebody might come around and buy it. The other side of that is, how do you get rid of these items? Then you start thinking about these boxes that are coming out that people are, you know, getting rid of. And you don't want to put, like, all trash in these boxes if you're able to list one because you got to get smart about it i think one of the biggest things is um i don't know how people get away with putting mystery boxes i did it and it, mine got shut down a couple times so i tried to put mystery box uh, but i think i figured out like how to do it is you can put the picture and you can put mystery box in the picture but what you want to do is you want to put uh in the title you want to put like random box of toys books uh you know whatever put that in there so you can kind of just give them a general thing of what's going to be in that thing. And I know I have one that I have listed right now that has, you know, toys, stickers, and more um, that I put in there. And a lot of the stuff, I'll be honest, a lot of stuff is pretty much junk. But you can put some good stuff in there and, and raise the price. Mine's not that much. That's why I didn't charge that much because I know it's a lot of junk that I'm just pretty much getting rid of. To clear out but I, I don't want to just give the stuff to goodwill or anything like that because it's stuff that they're, they're going to discount but something like this is going to be liked by a kid and if somebody wants to buy this much stuff for a kid um and you know once i figure out all the stuff i'm going to put in which is pretty much done right now after i put everything in there and pack everything in there and seal it shut this box will pretty much be done um and then if i don't sell it then i'll, I'll put it on uh, listia and probably sell it in there um, but when it gets down to it, you know, like I said, that, that's just kind of something you can do. But like I said, don't spill all trash in it. If you're going to do that, put it at a very low, low price and charge shipping. I think I put like 10 bucks or five bucks. I think it was like five ninety nine free shipping or something like that. I put on there something like that. Cause it's not going to cost that much. And a lot of it, like I said, it's a lot of it. And, and sometimes you might do this is. You're going to take a loss on a mystery box because you're getting rid of stuff that maybe you can't get rid of. But also throw in a couple things that might, you know, people that they're really going to like. Like if you put in, like, let's say you have some video games, okay? Let's say you have some video games and you can't get rid of them. They're, they're what some people call butt pickles that you can't get rid of. Um, and they've been sitting there. You can't sell them. And maybe they're Wii games or... Uh, PS2 games and PlayStation games that maybe you just can't get rid of. You make a video game mystery box or something like that or, or, or on whatever site you want to make it on. Um, and then at the end of that, find some games that are worth a little bit of money and toss them in there. So at the end of everything, they have all this junk that they probably don't like, but they got a couple games that are actually pretty good. So as long as you get something and maybe throw in a shirt that's really cheap at Walmart or something like that, throw it in there. And, you know, that's something where that could be something very, very cool. You know, I'm just trying to give ideas to people to think about reselling in a different way. And I think some of these people out there that do these videos, they kind of, it's the same thing. Oh, rehashed again. Oh, these are the brands to look for for clothing, blah, blah, blah. Go to the electronics section. Look this up, blah, blah, blah. And then you go to these stores and you're not finding much and you're like, oh, I go to the same place as these people do and I can't find anything. And that's where you kind of got to diversify. You got to kind of look, go out on your own and try a few things, pick up dishes, pick up trinkets in Goodwill that maybe you wouldn't go look at. Uh, that's where I'm going to start headed, I think, soon is because my Goodwill kind of sucks balls. And I'm going to start going, looking at some of these little things and getting into those things because 
I'm trying to diversify. I'm trying to get more product up on up, up on eBay. And I think in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to dig into the trenches and really kind of dig deep and start to pay for things a little bit more. And I think that's what it is. Once you get your, your uh, capital up on eBay, slowly build it up. Start buying a little bit more higher stuff every once in a while. You know, keep on buying your, you know, $25 to $2 items. But then start kind of going up and say, okay, well, I'm going to spend $5 on this. And I did buy this one thing, and I paid 4 bucks for it. I don't even know if I'm going to get... I think I'll get my money back. And that's the thing. As long as you can get your money back on the item, then you're fine. You're back where you was. You didn't lose anything, but you didn't gain anything. But you got your money back. And I think that's where I'm going to be at this, at this item, is that more than likely I'm probably going to have to charge like... 10 bucks, 15 bucks. It's the Pelican thing I talked about. I'm kind of worried about it now. I need to get the listing and get it up because of the fact that I'm just worried that I'm not going to sell it and I'm not going to make my money back because um, there's no adapter. There's no charger to it. But I think some of the ones I've seen on eBay didn't have a charger with it either. Um, but, you know, it just, it just comes down to, you know, like I said, trying different things and being willing to go out and get stuff that you're not accustomed to selling Taking pictures of it and just posting it on eBay and get, you know, and get out there. You know, I hope this video was clear. I think I rambled on a lot. You see me washing dishes at the beginning of the video, so that's pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all down below. Let me know what you thought about everything I discussed in the video. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the good jazz. Like I said, keep rocking, keep on reselling. Later, guys.